stupid people of Reddit. What is the stupidest thing you've done? I got high off my ass on tranquilizers and alcohol. That would already be stupid enough, but my sauced up brain had bigger plans. Being done with my bender, I decided to go home by public bus, which I had just missed and could see driving down the road. So I did exactly what would be the reasonable and responsible thing to do. I flagged down the cop car that was approaching and asked him to pull over the bus. He asked if I had been drinking, so I said yes, that's why I'm taking the bus home instead of driving. He said he'd give me a lift and I got in. I have no recollection of what happened next until the next day, but my mom told me a very nice police officer dropped me off at home and I had drooled all over his back seat. I work as a substitute middle school teacher. At the beginning of each day the kids listen to the announcements. One time they announced that one of the students who had been battling cancer passed away the night before. So me, being the great guy I am, give the students 5 minutes of time to sit quietly and reflect. Then I decide to lighten the mood by calling attendance, so I use a bizarre inflection to entertain the students. Called out Tyler, no response. Call it out again, no response. Finally one student piped up and said that was the kid that died the day before. This was after I called his name out several times with differing tones of voice to be comical, while all the students saw was me bashing the dead kid. Back to girl's house after dinner. She is early class the next day so gets ready for bed, but says I can stay and keep her company for a while. Laying in her bed, she's in silk pajamas, I'm fully clothed. We're just talking. I start running my hand up and down her back. She says mm -hmm. You'd better stop that, I'm getting turned on. So I stopped. Like AF idiot. I put an umbrella handle in my mouth and pushed the button to release the umbrella. I thought the umbrella would shoot out the front of my mouth and open. Instead the handle extended back into my mouth and broke my front teeth. No idea why I thought that. Last weekend my friend asked for a ride across town since he left his phone at a bar of the previous night. Somehow I heard car instead of phone so dropped him off and drove home. I don't answer calls while I'm driving since I'm a bad driver too, so didn't realize I missed three of his calls till I got home. I'm sure there's others, but my memory's going pretty fast as well. When I was a kid, I had a genius idea. People are in wheelchairs because they can't lift their legs to walk, right? So what if you tied a length of string around your knee, held onto the other end, and marched yourself around like a puppet? I even named my genius invention. I called it, Leg Reigns TM. It never occurred to me that if you were paralyzed you wouldn't be able to balance. It also didn't occur to me that I wasn't actually lifting my legs with my arms, I was doing it with my legs. And somehow I didn't realize that the reason my dad got me to demonstrate my idea to everyone he knew, one after another whenever somebody came over, was not because he was proud of the towering intellect his son possessed. One of my exes and I met in the city. We always went on dates in the city and never close to where we lived. I had just moved to the area, I had heard of the place he lived in but didn't think it was close to where I lived, and never really thought about it. Then I started staying over at his place, and when I was going home the following afternoons I would take the tram into city center, 20 minutes, and then get the bus to my house, another 40 minutes. I honestly thought the village he lived in was far from my house so I took the route I knew. Turns out he lives a 10 minute walk away. I did this like 8 times. I can actually see this happening. I was in Amsterdam and was trying to get directions from the clerk at a store to another store. She gave long, several stop, several different trams directions. It sounded just way off and I kept asking her to repeat it, and if she was sure, this was the route she had taken for years. It was literally a 15 minute walk down two side streets. I think when people live in larger cities they get so used to public transportation that they just don't even think of a shorter way. You're not alone. In notes from a small island by Bill Bryson, he writes about getting Londoners tourists to tell him how they'd get from Bank Station to Mansion House Station. They generally would suggest going down into the tube, getting the central line to Liverpool Street, then changing trains, walking up and down lots of escalators, onto the circle line and going five stops. The journey takes about 20 minutes and costs two pounds and 30 pence. Or they could just walk 200 feet between the two stations, but nobody ever thinks of doing that. Edit, bonus for those of you who are interested, animated map that allows you to shift between schematic and actual shape of the tube lines. And the actual map with streets overlaid. I was eating a strawberry pop-tart while spotting a friend who was bench-pressing a significant amount of weight in the gym in his basement. While loud, angsty heavy metal was blaring through a boombox, Team America happened to be on mute on the TV facing the bench. Midway through one of my friend's last sets, Gary gave the infamous signal, I giggled, and a big dollop of strawberry mush drool fell from my mouth directly into my friend's mouth, causing him to awkwardly drop the bar on his neck and break his clavicle. I'm not allowed to spot no more. 
At a job I worked long ago, the crew boss had forgotten he had agreed to give Dave a ride home that night. We caught lawns at various places, and Dave wasn't so good at it. We drove past one of those places on the way home, and he started ranting F Dave. He missed half that lawn, and it looks like S. That guy is as dumb as a rock. Dave quietly spoke up from the back seat, I'm trying my best. It was pretty quiet for the rest of the ride home. Tied a couch behind a truck with toe straps. Road asterisk on the couch down a gravel road. Smell burning as couch lights begin to catch fire from friction. Couch light catches in a pothole and bucks me five feet into the air. Half brief moment of immediate regret. Spend next week sitting very carefully as my ass no longer had any skin on it. I had diarrhea at the beach from eating seafood and still decided to go on a long walk. I ended up stranded and found a log facing the beach to sit on and surreptitiously poop. Covered it in the big sandbox, as it were, pulled up my bikini bottoms, and felt relief, only to stand up and realize that there was an entire family sitting on their beach house deck behind me. They. Saw. Everything. Edit, I am oddly proud of the thread that has resulted from my story. If you have not read it, trust me, you should. There are so many laughs awaiting you. You rock, Reddit or pours. Y'all are some funny F. One time I tried to fart while playing online poker really late while my girlfriend was asleep. About half of the fart came out before I realized more was on its way out too. I caught that before it was too late and jumped up and started to run to the bathroom. I had headphones on and yanked my head to the left and pulled my tower over as I kicked the 25 pounds weight on the floor, broke my toe and then s all over myself. The girl of my dreams came back to my place after dinner and drinks. We had been friends for a long time, but never a hint of anything more. I was in a sleeping bag on the floor. She told me, hey, you can jump up under the quilt to get warm. And my response was, oh, this sleeping bag is really warm. It wasn't until the next day that I realized what I had done. Wow. Thinking about this makes me really depressed, sad face. That reminds me of something like that happening to me. I was sitting on a couch with this girl I knew watching a movie. In the middle of it she lays down and keeps trying to get comfortable and inching her way towards me. I finally noticed and said I'd get her a pillow and set her up a nice little spot on the other side of the couch. I'm so dumb. Dude. Same thing happened to me. Even worse though. Partying at a college away from mine. Girl, you can come and sleep in my room if you want. Me, no thanks I snore. I don't want to keep you up. Girl, it's all good. Just come over. Me, and oh. I have snore. Still don't know why I got so defensive. Ouch. We've all been there though in our awkward years. I remember meeting a cute girl at a party in college, getting her number, knowing she liked me, getting invited back to her place, cuddling up and watching TV. She told me I could stay the night. I end up saying I'll just sleep on the couch. She then texts me as we're going to bed saying hey you can come up here with me. So I do that. Only I just sleep next to her at the end of the bed, clothes completely on, and nothing happens. But yeah shit like that happens. Just learn from your experiences my friend. Edit. I meant in the bed not at the end of the bed like a dog. And shit man, people are calling me autistic. I was honestly just oblivious and shy as all f. But she was also that way so nothing really happened. Point of the story is to learn from it and take more risks in the future. Let's see, where to start. I once killed a pint of vodka, straight, on a dare. Spent the rest of the night ralphing. I fell for a prank of laying a stick across a shovel handle and then stomping the shovel spade to see how high the stick would go. I had my windshield tinted to 5% on my car. I sent a Nairobi prince some cash so I'd get a big return. I really did. I voted for Ross Perot in 92. I volunteered for several things in boot camp without knowing what they were. I rear-ended a cop car. During the questioning, I got the involuntary giggles and when the cop asked if I thought it was funny, I said yes. In Little League, I chased a ball under the bleachers from the backside. Imagine running fast as the bleacher seats get lower and lower. Cracked my head open. Hit on a starting linebacker's girlfriend at a frat party. I even knew it was his girlfriend. Noticed my low wheel pressure light on in the car. Decided I could make it to the next exit 10 miles away. Took bowling as a hypers class in college. Cheated on the final exam and got caught. Decided to jump in the water to piss. Left the boat in gear. Spent a half hour trying to pick up a quarter someone had super glued to a sidewalk. I'm really not as dumb as all this sounds. I'm just impulsive. Can relate. My girlfriend mentioned she was making toast and, for some unknown reason, I replied in a talking to a small child type way, uh, are you a clever girl? 
I hadn't meant for it to come out in the condescending S for brains way it did and I have no idea why I thought it would sound anything other than stupid slash rude. We've been together for 7 years, but that was one of the stupider things I have ever said. Edit a lot of people commenting that my girlfriend seems overly sensitive for being offended when I said this. Just to point out, I never said she was offended. She was initially surprised thinking I was being super sarcastic slash rude then we just laughed it off. We have a very jokey relationship anyway. Was commenting to let OP know that I, too, have the verbal shits at times and say stuff that make no sense when spoken aloud. Unable to find my phone, in a complete state of panic, sending my friend a text asking, Dude, did I leave my phone at your place? I can't find it anywhere. He replied, What are you using to send this text, genius? I have never, in my life, been so ashamed. It was one of those moments of true stupidity. I was finishing on the toilet, about to go to bed. I stood up and flushed. As I did, I thought I heard something plop into the bowl. I reached in and to my delight, grabbed the first thing I felt in my hand. Picked up a turd. I have two. The time I ended up in the hospital because of pasta. One night I was doing dishes that I had left for about a week, uni life, and there was a piece of pasta heavily crusted onto the bottom of the pot. I couldn't get it off with a sponge or with the brush I was using so I tried to pick it off with my nails. I managed to pick a little bit too hard and boom the pasta shard is under my thumbnail up to about the halfway point. About 10 seconds later my finger was dripping blood and I realized that the pasta was actually getting cooked by my blood and visions of awful infections started to run through my head. I decided to play it safe and go to the ER and the doctor that ended up seeing me 3 hours later told me that I had made the right choice coming in, which made me feel a bit better. A couple of scalpels, some surgical scissors and 30 minutes of excruciating pasta extraction later I walked out of the hospital missing half of my thumbnail. It hurt like an absolute bitch for the next week. I was told that I was the only pasta related injury any of the doctors in the hospital at the moment had ever seen. The time I, literally, tried to be a helicopter and broke my wrist. I was 4 years old and on a field trip with my kindergarten class. It was lunchtime and we were all sitting on a jungle gym eating our lunches. For whatever reason I decided it was a good idea to stop eating my lunch and walk to the top of the jungle gym so I could jump off. Don't ask me to explain it, it's been 17 years and I'm still amazed at my own inexplicable stupidity, I'm fortunate not to have won a Darwin Award so far. I had recently learned what Adkelopter was and was amazed that they could fly just by spinning things around. My flawless logic of the day was if they can do it why can't I? So, seemingly without any discernible reason, little 4 year old me put down a sandwich, marched to the top of the jungle gem, put his arms out at his sides and jumped off while spinning around in my best Adkelopter impression. And that was how I got my first ambulance ride. TLDR, I accidentally tested ancient Chinese torture tactics on myself and also tried to be a helicopter at one point. After a night of drinking, we went back to my then boyfriend's place to chill. He turned on the TV, but I had other ideas. I pulled the rolling chair away from his computer desk, placing myself between him and the TV. I turned the chair backward from my leg over in what I thought was going to be a seductive manner, whipping my hair a little. Ended up putting my foot down on the edge of the wheelie part on the other side, rolled my ankle, and my momentum carried me all the way over to the floor. I hit the ground, the chair back smashed my face, and my nose started bleeding. Not my brightest moment. My parents left the country one summer for two weeks and left me alone, so I decided it was a perfect opportunity to have some of my closest friends over often. My rents lived out in the middle of nowhere with the nearest neighbors 100 yards away, plus, the house had a pool and a hot tub, so it was a perfect setup. The first night I had people over, the hot tub got nasty, we may have exceeded maximum capacity a little bit. So my bright idea was to siphon all the water out of the tub directly into the pool and refill the tub with the hose. Worked perfectly, hot tub clean, pool a little bit warmer. The next night, where it was catching on, and the group of friends increased in size. Again, the hot tub water was almost opaque by the next morning. No problem. Hot tub water went into the pool. Refreshed the tub with clean hose water. The third night yuck yuck y-u-c-k. But you know the drill. Hot tub gunk dumped into the pool. What the, where's the bottom of the pool? Now I had a problem, in my efforts to keep the tub clean, I had neglected the pool water, which had been slowly turning into a sickly grayish green color. Oh. Filters should take care of it by the time parents come home in a week, right? I thought to myself. But what if it didn't? How could I ensure the pool water would be crystal clear for my spectacularly anal parents? That's when the genius idea bulb went off in my head. 20 minutes later I had tens of thousands of gallons of water roaring out of the pool, working its way down the mountain like a grand liquid chlorinated avalanche. Oh no you didn't. You say? Oh yes. 
I did. I was feeling smug about my dirty water problem solution when I noticed the shape of the inside of the pool becoming less defined. You see, we have a vinyl skin for the interior of the pool, and guess what held it down against the concrete? That's right, the water. To my horror, the blue skin was methodically sucking itself off the walls and bottom like a yawning college student extricating his hungover body off his gunky bathroom floor. Immediately, I stopped the exodus of water, the pool now only a couple of feet deep in the far side. The shallow side was a little wrinkled, but I could salvage the deep end. Now, how was I going to fill up the pool again? Well, what worked for the hot tub? Oh yeah! The water hose. I was sure it could fill up the pool in five days. So I turned on the water confident that the pool would be full of clean well water presently. Oh yeah, that's right, the house used well water. And after a few days of pumping, the water didn't flow out so quickly anymore. Five days from the beginning of the refill, the water was just reaching the shallow end, and mom and dad were coming home the next day. TLDR, threw parties while parents out of town, emptied pool to clean it fast. Next time, the tan parents come home. Update part 2 your AS requested. And now, tan pool 2, fiasco bugaloo. For the last 24 hours before my parents flew back into Roanoke, I was so terrified I was physically ill. By this point at least the water reached the far side of the pool, so the vinyl on that end was no longer a rubber trampoline, but a wrinkled giant model of the Appalachian Mountains, if the Appalachians were covered in gigantic blue pebble wallpaper that is. I tried putting the pool cover on the water to hide the shallowness. Unfortunately, the Lord did not answer my prayers and make it magically thick and opaque enough to hide the damage or depth of the water. Forlornly, I thought about what was probably going to be the last few hours of my life. I asked friends to come over for sympathy and support, but no one had enough of a death wish to come with me to greet my parents. As if dealing with my parents' arrival at home wasn't enough, I had to pick them up from the airport. I hopped into their forerunner and probably for the only time in my life, drove under the speed limit the whole way to Roanoke. I tell you that to this day, every cheerful teeny bopper song that K92 played on that drive still brings chills to my spine. A pox on you, CNC Music Factory. I finally got to the terminal, just in time to see my executioners pull up to the gate. I could clearly hear my heart thumping as one by one, the passengers disembarked through the door. Could it be? Maybe they missed their flight and I wouldn't have to deal with this for several more tan man. We're over here. My parents, as always, came out with the last few passengers, haggard from their 20-hour journey from India. To them, it was still Indian time, something like 3 a.m. in the morning, but they were happy to see me. My mom rushed up to me and hugged me hard. My dad gave me the fatherly half-hug slash pat on the back. I could imagine those fingers turning into claws shredding my heart out. Dutifully, I kept my fake plastic smile and lugged their luggage, for 80-pound bags, the airline's allowed limit, back to the car and started the drive home. We discussed trivial matters about the flight on the meandering drive down I-81, 10 miles per hour under the speed limit. I can't remember what I asked and commented about, but I do remember the ringing getting louder and louder in my ears and the urge to puke on the steering wheel getting harder and harder to suppress. Suddenly, I broke. I looked at my father, my lungs empty and diaphragm full of lead, and told him, Dad, I did something. My father perceptively realizing his son does more things wrong than right, raised his eyebrow. Hmm. Something really bad. I couldn't hear my mom in the back seat, which meant she was holding her breath. I could see my dad's eyes get imperceptibly wider in preparation for the evil stare, which was known to make several children and grown men soil themselves uncontrollably. What did you do? He finally asked. He was probably expecting a deck chair to be broken, perhaps an unmowed lawn, which is the usual extent of my parentless mischief. I, uh, um, I, uh. Finally, I drawled it out, emptied the pool. He just sat there stunned, processing the information for a few seconds or ten minutes, I can't remember. I do remember fleeting like puzzlement. His mind was churning, trying to figure out what this meant. Could his son actually be this colossally stupid, his own flesh and blood? My father was first in his class in school. My mother was first in her class in school. Genetics dictate that they have a son with a decent amount of common sense. So his reaction, his deducing of what was going on, finally came up with the only sensible conclusion and reaction. My father laughed. He roared so loud that I had to wince a little, but it dawned on me that I had been worrying for nothing. My dad understood that mistakes happen. That is really funny, he snorted. I felt like a big weight was lifting off my shoulders, things were going to be all re- did you really think I was going to fall for that joke, he finished, still chuckling, you almost had me there for a second. The weight returned double force. No dad, I mean it. I really emptied the pool. 
I think he was pondering the possibility that I had a UVA grad for an obstetrician and whether his real son had been switched at birth. Not the whole thing. He asked, still in disbelief. No. I numbly answered. He looked a little relieved. Just a few feet? Kind of, a foot or two off the bottom. The very bottom. Do you know how Caucasian people get red when they are angry, scared, or upset? Well, it's a little less obvious on Indians, given our darker skin. At that moment, my father could have been an albino. I've never seen his face change color that quickly or intensively. It's a good thing I was driving or he might have attacked me on the spot. I could tell you what he yelled at me for the next 15 miles, but thankfully I don't speak the language of my heritage that well, and that is mostly what he cursed at me with. Basically, I think it was a thousand-word Indian epithet for colossally stupid, lousy child who cannot possibly be of my loins. Eventually, he calmed down a little and succeeded in bringing his hands down from a choking gesture and took a few minutes for air, then he yelled again, then rested, yelled some more, then quieted outright. Then he saw the pool. Needless to say, all hell broke loose. What happened next must have been pretty bad, because I don't remember it that well, but I do remember thanking my lucky stars that I still had an apartment at Tech to which I could escape. But like all fathers, time, and a probable investigation to confirm I was really his child, calmed him down enough to remember he loved and could forgive me. Eventually, a tanker truck full of water came by to fill up the rest of the pool and life began to return to something somewhat normal. My father, the amateur roast master, realized he had great fodder to embarrass his son with at all future family and social functions and learned to speak to me in a civil tone again. That is, until a few weeks later when our water well dried up. I fell asleep on a roof. A slanted roof. I rolled over. Ever have one of those dreams where you are falling? I woke up just before I hit the ground. I rode my bike under a truck. I made a slingshot that fired metal discs through trees. I took these plates off my father's cars and bikes. I made a stump remover. Basically an IED for farm work. Got confused and got the measurements wrong. I figured this out while a two-ton stump was about 80 feet in the air. I thought that my knife juggling skills would impress girls at a party. I had been drinking heavily. Had sex on a trampoline. Advice if you ever want to try this, don't. Penises can break. Had sex in the water at a beach. Advice if you want to try this, don't. Sand gets everywhere especially if you are uncircumcised. Shot myself with a .22 bullet. Not the gun, just the bullet. Well, in a hammer. Took a half pound of gunpowder to school. Tried to write my name on the football field. Turns out the guy with the distinctive name, and no eyebrows, can easily be identified. Another time I tried to jump a fence on a motorcycle. A barbed wire fence. Strangely, if this had gone just a little worse the beach thing would have gone better. Parked my dad's car the wrong way. I.e. in a swimming pool. Tried to help a dog who had been hit by a car. Had a large portion of my face torn open. That being said I would do this again. Lots more, but I'm a little tired. My wife thinks I'm stupid, BTW. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now, 